Welcome back to the Chicago Tomahawk. I'm Mike, and I got my linebate Matt with me. And today we're going to go over some Blackhawks news. Blackhawks beat the uh, Vegas Golden Knights yesterday at the time of this recording. We're recording on Saturday. And we're going to go over some NHL news. So, Matt, the Blackhawks beat the Golden Knights. Man, that was, it was a tough, close game. You know, at one point, you know, they were down 2-1, to one, and Bedard came in and scored a really nice goal. I think Foligno was trying to just get the puck into the middle of the ice and let uh, Bedard do his thing, and and he did exactly what he needed to do. Um, You know, this team, a a lot of people have been giving it, you know, a little bit of flack, which I think is kind of bogus because, you know, we weren't expecting them to be playoff contenders this year. You know, we're looking for this new team to get together, start to build some chemistry with, with some with these young players, and go out there and uh, and essentially do the best that they can and, and get the experience that they need. And to be honest with you, I think that they've been um, they've been doing very admirable for who they've been playing. I mean, they've played one non playoff team uh, since since the uh, since the beginning of the season. Matt, first off, what did you think of that uh, that Vegas game? Yeah, that was probably one of the best games I've seen the Hawks play and yeah. Vegas. Yeah, they were undefeated. I think they had, I think we gave them their first loss OT loss, but um, the Hawks still they didn't loss. quit, man. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, Vegas had some mistakes and the Hawks made them pay for it. I think t- uh, Tyler Radish, he had the um, Taylor Radish, Taylor Radish. He had that, that terrible turnover by, I think Theodore. Theodore. Yeah. Well, a yeah. Norris candidate so far this year. And he buried it. Um, it looked like the puck just, it was, uh, it came down and then it just kind of like flipped up a little bit and it went like over her that's stick. That's not Vegas like though. I mean, they've yeah. been running over people. I think they ran over the Hawks earlier this season. I think it was a la- maybe even last week. But uh, Bedard had a beautiful snipe. And I don't know if you noticed the Sully. Oh, yeah. A little bit of vintage Caner going on. Yeah. Pretty cool. And, uh, he was yeah. really happy. Like you said, man, Felino, I thought he stood out like crazy, man, making some really nice passes, some some spin Patrick Kane like moves on some guys. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, yeah. Felino, the the veteran throwing up some youngster moves and uh just a good game by him. He's been a good good pickup. And Corey Perry, I still think is man, worth every penny. The guy literally does it all. He's tough as nails. He's just just a great agitator making makes he gets power play time too. So I mean, yeah, the guys, another good signing, and um, I I hope he really rubs off on these young guys, and these young guys are watching. Like this guy's been doing it for a long time, and teams still want him. So I mean, he's a valuable asset for a team. Well, you know, Perry, I've been watching him pretty closely, man, and he's he's the type of guy that he does it seems like the basic things very well. Like he passes pretty well when, when he has to shoot, he gets the puck on net, you know, there's nothing very flashy about his game and him being a, 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 a former 50 goal scorer doesn't, um, isn't lost on me. And I think that if, if he can, I think that he could put some, maybe 20 goals in the net this year. Yeah. If we let him shoot power play time. Yeah. I, I think he's turned more of uh, on this team at least. A passer. He's yeah. very smart. He's got really good vision. He makes smart, easy plays. And, and and I notice after he passes it, he plants himself right in front of that net and he just causes chaos. And yeah. that creates a lot of goals, like a goal chance. So, I mean, if he could keep that up, he's going to be a hot commodity at the trade deadline. And honestly, I'd, I'd hate to see him go. But if someone's going to overpay to get him on a like a playoff team going for it, man, he'll fit right in. Any team, he'll fit right in the way he plays. In the interview, they mentioned, you know, what his experience has been like coming to the Blackhawks. And he was like, you know, this organization has been very, very good to me and my family. You know, they helped us get settled, you know, um, getting a school for my my kids and, and stuff like that. Which is pretty cool, man, to hear, you know, a guy who was, you know, you would never think that, yeah, yeah, you would never think he'd come to the Blackhawks and, you know, him, you know, kind of enjoying his time so far. Um, as far as him getting moved, I don't think that they're going to, man. Um, I think that him and Felino are, are here for Bedard and mentoring him and, uh, and, and Hall, you know, mentoring him and, and, and getting him, 
and his head straight in, into the game and getting used to the NHL because um, I don't think that they would bring in mentors just to trade them halfway through the season because, you know, Bedard would be like, you know, what, what, what is this? You know, Kane and Taves never took too lightly to that. And, um, yeah, you know, you don't point, want yeah. to, you want, you, you want him to have his mentors so that he has somebody to lean on. And, um, I mean, I, I'd be surprised if they were in here for, you know, two years. I think that's what Edmonton might have done or they lacked with McDavid. They didn't really have that older guy. You know, he could, they kind of said, hey, kid, it's your team, you know? Yeah. And figure it out. And he, he, I mean, he's been unbelievable, you know, with getting all these awards and everything. But still in the playoffs, I think the bringing Duncan Keith in that year was very good for them. You yeah. know, it's three time cup champ and Norris trophy winner and Consmite winner. I mean, that's somebody you need in the locker room. And I feel like that's what they're lacking. And they are absolute dog shit this year. One in five, yeah. I think. Oh, man. And he's Connor's hurt. So it's the dry sidle show. And he can't do it all himself. So, and it's all on his shoulders and now. Now it's on Leon's shoulders. Yeah. So, so at what point, man? I wanted to talk about this in the NHL section, but we might as well do it now. At what point does Drysaddle and McDavid just say, "You know what, man, this sucks." You know, they've they haven't done anything to um to, to to solidify this team into a playoff powerhouse. You know, so at what point are they like, "You know what, I'm I'm ready to move on." I think it's going to be Leon before Connor. Yeah. And you know, he's going to get paid big bucks wherever he goes. It's it's gonna get old, man. If if they if they can't get it together, it is early. It is early. You can have a good turnaround and you'll be fine. Edmonton, they got some good players, but the problem is the salary cap. I mean, they're paying like Nurse Seth Jones money, and he's not performing to it. I mean, you got two goalies, Jack Campbell, who kind of hasn't found it. Skinner, I think he's making like three four million, and you got. Jack Campbell making five. You got a lot of money invested in goalies that, you know, aren't stopping the puck. And same with the defense. It, it's just in the playoffs, you need those positions to really step it up. And it just hasn't worked. Connor and Leon could put up six goals, you know, and they'll still lose like seven to six yeah. because they can't keep the puck out of the net. Yeah. And I like, I like the Oilers. I thought, if anything, this, their window's closing. It's kind of like the same situation in Toronto. But Toronto is more of a; they got a better defense at like yeah. by a long shot. It's but the goal they're, they're well they're they're definitely more built better than Edmonton is. Well, and it's the goaltending of both teams is what turns me off of you know saying hey this this is the Leafs here. Sorry, it, I can't say that because the goal. I think the goaltending uh, Samsonov it, it, his numbers are terrible, and then you look over at that. Uh, yeah, in Edmonton, they're they're one in five, and they you know Connor's Connor's out, so you got to lean on these guys to you know get you through it. So when Connor gets back, it, it's it's not like completely lost. But I don't know if Connor's playing tonight. They, it's a big game for them, the uh, the Heritage Classic outside. But if I'm a NHL viewer and I'm turning on these two teams, a one in five team and like a three and four or three and five team, whatever it was. This is terrible <laughs> for for ratings. I like. I'd rather see like a Boston and like a juggernaut team going at it, you know. But yeah. it was planned a, a while ago. They thought you know it wasn't going to be like this, but you know, can't see into the future, I guess. But going back to Toronto, if if you can't, if you don't get a goaltender at the deadline, that's a true number one. I I don't think that they're going to be able to make it out of the second round, let alone maybe even the first round, depending on the matchup. They, they, they Usually it's a tough road for them. They're running into Tampa, or and they could easily run into Boston this year. It's just, it's so, that Atlantic division is like a, just a powerhouse. Boston could lay an egg in the first round again, though, too. They could in Detroit, man. Sneaky, sneaky, getting good, which is not good for the other teams in the division. So Dreisaitl's got this season and next season left on his contract, and he'll be 29 in that 25-26 year, and that's the year that the cap goes up big time. So if you were a team and you were going to sign Dreisaitl, 
what would you give him? It's going to get probably 13. Oh it's going to happen. He's going to get the money. So we'll yeah. be at a lockout. It's, it'll be in a lockout pretty soon. Once these contracts get really bad, like it, it's just it's a pattern with the NHL. They sign these ridiculous deals, and then two years later, yep, lockout season, can't get an agreement. So, I, you know, I I think he's going to go somewhere out east, though. Somebody with well, you know, space. these guys, these guys are looking at the money that the NBA players are making. Um, you know, NFL players are making man, MLB, and they're like, hey, look. What's what's the deal with growing this league so that you know the players can get can get paid more? You know, we've got well, you got to get the viewers it? first. That's the sure. thing. You got to get the viewers like those the other sports get, and that's why right. they get big big bucks. Hockey's just usually at the bottom, so right, which sucks. Yeah. I mean, Barkley actually does a pretty good job, man. Of you know, he'll talk hockey a little bit and. You know, he's like, man, these guys are, they go out there and they get it on, you know? And he says how entertaining it is, which is pretty interesting to hear him, hear him say, you know? And um, I think that's what hockey needs. They need people on the outside of the hockey world bringing in, um, bringing in new, new faces, new fans. I mean, when you've got somebody like, you know, like Biz or, or, you know, Ryan Whitney, (laughs) you know, trying to trying to how do you say bring bring more fans into the league like they don't they're very good for the fans the guys who are already hockey fans yeah. but we need people to bring in new people into this league into liking hockey who's the guy at you mad know? dog sports is that pat mcgaffey or something McGee? i have no idea he he's a big podcast guy he does podcasts with uh aaron Rodgers all the time oh you're pat mcafee, McAfee. yeah I'm sorry. he's on he's got his own thing man yes. he's on uh did you see his he's on, ESP- thing? he's on espn now yeah so he he, he had, had a, a huge deal he's he's entertaining he actually he, is. he actually said something good about hockey he had uh it was actually the hawks and i believe hawks versus boston and there was a dirty hit and he saw, I think it was Jason Dickinson, come to the aid of the guy. I forget which Hawk got cheap shotted, but I mean, he goes, this is why I love hockey. You got guys throwing the body around, and if you, they don't like the hit, teammate will come in and say, no, 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 not on my watch type of stuff. And he's a guy like you're talking about looking for. Guys start talking about hockey more to build, yeah. build the brand. That's a guy you need to, and, you know, having the partnership with ESPN, Probably has been good for hockey. You know, I've I've noticed I've been watching other teams more now with my Hulu plus whatever package I have now. And, sure, I have too. And I wanted to see the hype with the Devils because I've, you know, I've kind of been anti Jack Hughes for a while. And yeah, we both. Well, hey, rightfully so, dude. Yeah, you know, first like, three years were busts. Uh, for sure. I mean, a lot of people were talking about like this kid, like he's been doing this. You know, ever since he came into the league, and that's not true. The first two years he was in the league, he was dog shit. He was was small um, and inexperienced, and I think he tried to do too much. And now, yeah, he was the last game. I think we we were texting. I was. They actually ended up losing that game. It was the Capitals, but that second period, he really just took control of the game. I mean, he looked like Kane. He was making just ridiculous moves around guys making awesome passes, and he leads the league in points right now. And, you know, three years ago, this guy could barely get 40 points in the season, if that. And now he he's just on fire. Last year was a career high. I think he had 100 points, 99, 99. points or something. Yeah. 40-something goals. He's just ridiculous. And, like, he's picking up where he left off from last year. Yeah, I'm not. I'm still not a fan. I mean, he's the. I, I as of now, I think that he's a great player. I think the Devils did a really good job, as really smart in hindsight of signing yeah. him when they did. But I mean, it could have been disastrous. I mean, his first season. He. I mean, his second season, he had 31 points in 56 games, and then they were uh, the very year generous after, was, very generous. They saw yeah, something the, that we didn't. Yeah, the year after his third season is when he started picking up. He he played in 49 games that season and he had uh 26 goals and 30 assists. And he continued that on to the to last year where he had 43 goals and 56 assists. I'll tell you so, what, man, he 
I think he had eight points in two games. And <laughs> yeah, he did. He got he, Tyler Toffoli's on that team. And yeah, he Toffoli is. got a hat trick. He scored two goals the next game, and that guy's got to be the happiest guy. I just, right. I'm playing on a line with Jack Hughes right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna get paid again another deal pretty soon if I can keep this up. Yeah. Yeah, but he, you know Jack Hughes, he's he's the face of the game. He's definitely a, a face of the of the NHL now. A lot of these young kids, man, are and the old guys now, man, are like Ovechkin, Ovi, um, Sid. Like brutal, these are kind dude. of he looked bad. the old the old timers now, man. And these new kids are really starting to pick up. You know, obviously Drysaddle and and McDavid are are faces of the league, and um, but these young kids are really starting to. Uh, to make their names known. They say Luke Hughes is the better Hughes brother, and that's pretty impressive, man, because they said that... He did look good, man. Um, I think it's Quinn Hughes has, I think, 95 minutes of in Vancouver. Quinn Hughes in Vancouver has 95 minutes of on-ice time so far and zero goals against while he's been on the ice. Incredible. Yeah. Well, Luke, uh, he was getting some power play time with his brother. These guys, they look like the Sedins out there. Feed yeah. each other, like just just knew where to go, knew where he was going to be, right. and that was probably a great draft pick for the Devils. Just to, can you see him going after Quinn in the future? Why not? I mean, Vancouver's not bad. I think they're second in the Pacific, but the Pacific is pretty much like the AHL right now, except the Golden Knights. I mean, they're you know obviously five, I think they're five zero and one, so that's going to be their division. The next two teams competing are probably going to be the Kings and, you know, probably maybe, maybe even Vancouver will sneak out of there. But the Central is going to be, you know, that are the two wild card teams that right. they're going to get five playoff teams from there. But yeah, it'd be pretty cool to see all three Quinn bro- brothers on the, the same uh, squad. I think that uh, they, they're saying that Luke is the is the best is the best brother like out of all of them. And um, Quinn says within the next, I think, four years, he said he'll be a top 10 player in the league. It's insane. Yeah, well, I mean, the family's got hockey in the in the blood, man. Yeah. Quinn's good. Yeah. I've always liked Quinn Hughes. Uh, Jack, I just, you know, it's tough to be a first overall pick. You got a lot of yeah. pressure. And, you know, he's really, he's proved me wrong. I mean, I, I thought at the time, 8 million bucks for a kid who, you know, barely got over 40 points once was insane but i mean it's a good deal for him and a good deal actually the devils are probably the winners of that don't you think like if, yeah like if they waited one more year say they gave him a one-year deal he puts in 40 guarantee he'd be making like 11 a year at least yeah so yeah or 12 that, i mean that was a good good signing by the devils they showed a lot of faith in him and you know he's paying them back and he's probably underpaid you look at his numbers now but he, he's locked in for eight years at eight mil it's a good deal for yeah. the devils moving back on to the blackhawks curse scored the game winner for that vegas game it's about time and you know this guy needs a goal um you know i'm glad that he got on the board but someone I want to talk about is Lucas Reichel, man. He's, you know, unfortunately, you know, he's got a lot of eyes on him. He's looking to put some points on. I've heard people say that he needs to be sent down to Rockford, but I don't agree. I think that he needs time at the at the professional level getting out of this rut that he's in and uh, starting to put some points on the board. What do you think? Yeah, poor guy. He's, I don't think he's done much. Uh, maybe a couple of of assists, maybe. Uh, I know he hasn't scored. Uh, sending him down, it's tough, man, with the young guy. You could send him, you know, say, hey, we're sending you down, and it can really get to him. Yeah. And, you know, you don't want to lose him completely, and he, you know that he's got a lot of pressure on himself, and you know he's thinking about it. So I, I think you should stay the course and just stay behind him any way you can and try to anything to get him on the on the score sheet. Just let him Power play. play time. I mean, you you got to lead late in the third period. Throw him out there. Get him an open net goal. Get him started. It's like yeah. baseball. If you're in a hitting slump, coach, give me the bunt sign. I'm, I got to try <laughs> anything. I mean, you got to do anything. You can't stay behind him. And, you know, surround him with guys that are going to, you know, like Connor. Give him Connor Bedard one game. Put him on the wing or something. Just Just get him going. 
they've they're they're practicing together a lot after practices. I've heard Korchinski, Wyatt Kaiser, um, Bedard, Reichel. These guys are all staying after practice together. Okay. Actually, the other day, Bedard and Reichel were working on one timers. Bedard was uh, was giving them passes. So that that's a good thing. He's putting in the work. You know, it, it pays off. He'll get there. I, I still think he's one of the best players on the team. It's got to be top five at least. Just uh, be patient with him. I mean, there's honestly, it's it's more it's harder on him, you know. And the, the fans want to see him succeed. I mean, I do. I'm a big fan of him. I thought last year he was unbelievable in the games we called him up on. Yeah. Just uh, he'll get going. It's just going to take a little time. It's honestly, he never started the the year with the team, so it's it's new for him. It's it's it new. Is. He's going to have to learn and just taking a little bit longer. That's all. I think uh, you said Donato scored his second his second goal. Uh, he's been up and down the the lineup, playing on the first line. Now yeah. I think he's down on the fourth line. Um, the Hawks have been moving guys around, which is smart. Looking to see what works and what doesn't. Um, obviously, when you're losing games, you know these guys are looking to win any way that they can. Uh, Bedard had a beautiful snipe. You know this kid is really. Um, you, you give this kid some time, dude, and he's going to start. I think he's going to start taking over games. I'll tell you what, Felino and him look pretty well together. They, they do, clicked. man. They do. Yeah. I don't think Radish looks bad with him either. No, I, I think Tyler Johnson would actually fit in with Bedard, too. I think anybody yeah. can fit with Bedard. I, I, Tyler Johnson, <laughs> I, I think he's a really good player. He just, uh, yeah, I think so, too. You know, he, he, poor guy doesn't have a line mate. That's the thing. Yeah. And one thing I want to say about Bedard is that he... He's trying to skate through three guys. Yeah, you could probably do that in juniors, but against an NHL defenseman, there's no way. You you can't he I think he tries too hard with that. He's just got to go back to the basics and like, "Hey, you got nothing? Turn around, look for, you know, some reinforcements coming in behind you or just get it deep." Like he'll he'll skate into three guys and, and I'm like, "Dude, you're you can't do that. You're unbelievable, but it's not going to happen against an NHL defenseman." So I mean I I I think it takes balls to do that. Like you're 18 and you're trying to, you know, finesse around guys like you know that have been playing in the league for 10 plus years. They're probably just gonna laugh at you and just knock yeah. you right off the puck. I noticed that a lot with him. I also noticed that dude, he stays he's out there for a long period of time. He takes <laughs> long long shifts. Yeah, he does. And I was texting a, a buddy. A former teammate of mine for a lot of years, he was saying, dude, if I played on this kid's team, I'd be pissed off. Like, this kid's getting all this ice time, and then he gets off, and then I'm going to get, like, a 30-second shift. And <laughs> I was like, well, yeah, I mean, he's, he's like, the only guy in the team right now. They're just, and the kid's 18. He's got the energy, you know. He's, he wants to be out there. He's a winner. But he was, he was saying, like, yeah. I would still be pissed because, like, hey, I it, we're it's a team, you know. I want to be out there too, just as much as you. But we gotta, we gotta do this right. You can't be taking like two minute shifts and just kind of hurting the team. So I kind of yeah. agree with him. I, he does take yeah, long. Do. He does take long shifts, and for, he was I, out there for two minutes and fifty seconds the, for the, the power uh, play. For, no, for the oh, for the, the uh, overtime. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, I agree with him. I I played with him for a long time, and he's he's a smart dude about hockey. And uh, it's just like yeah, the kids, he's got a lot of pressure on himself, and he he wants to be the best. And usually, those guys don't ever want to leave the ice. And yeah, he, it's not a bad thing. It's just like okay, it's a team sport, though. I I you know we got to get these. Let's get some fresh legs out there. And at the same time, that's what they brought him in for. Yeah, you know, yeah, for sure. I mean, they're like, "Hey, man, whatever it, it whatever it takes for you to be comfortable to get the experience that you need, so that you can play the way that you feel that you need to play." I think he's got Cardi Cardi Blanche out there. I I think that he just needs to like if you got nothing, it's not working out. Get off because usually yeah. when you're staying out there too long you're going to make a mistake and then the mistake can go back in your net and then you're in trouble. Right. That's when it starts getting bad. I don't think it's happened yet with, with him over, you know, being on the ice too much, but eventually it'll catch up. 
And that's when teams take advantage. Like, this kid's been out there for two minutes and 50 seconds or whatever. Let's let's roll right through this guy and just, you know, go create a chance the other way because he's out of gas. I mean, that could also be what he's looking for, too. Where he's like, people he's are thinking. Yeah. 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 They think that he's making a mistake. He's like, oh, no, you're in my world well, now. D- do you remember when they were, <laughs> uh, they were in Vegas? The other, It was not the last game. It was the first Vegas game they had against each other. And. He it was that it was the first home game, and it was the first power play. I forget what center won it, but Bedard ended up getting you know kind of sneaking by everybody and just uh-huh. that laser top shelf. And Darren Payne goes, "Oh, there's old number ninety eight in the weeds coming out," and, giving him, <laughs> and I'm like, "What? There's old number ninety eight? I was like, "Oh man, I love Panger, man." He's like, "Oh, there's old number ninety eight out of the weeds, like a sniper." And, but yeah, man, he he's it's been fun, man. He's 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 living up to the hype. So I I hope he, he gets a rookie of the year. He's got to just start taking off with points. Yeah, he does. Um, I think um, what's it? Korczynski has been playing well, man. Um, I think that he skates well. I think he skates up with the puck well. But Wyatt Kaiser, man, I think has been a yeah, he's been um, good. A, he's been a, a good presence on that on that back end. Um, he's got a good physical presence. I've seen him make a few hits. He had a couple mistakes in the last game, but I mean, he is still a rookie, you know. Yeah, so. I'm really happy with this defense, and I don't know if you noticed this, but Connor Murphy's been blocking everything that comes his way. I haven't. <laughs> yeah, I think he had five block shots the other night. Oh, he's good for something. He's looking to he's yeah. looking to improve, man. I, which is, I mean, <laughs> hey, this is what we need, right? This is what we need. Yeah. We need all hands on deck. I mean, you got to do something out there. Yes, I agree. You got to be a traffic uh, Peter- cone. You got to be a traffic cone. <laughs> Peter Morasic has taken the net. Do you think that Arvid Soderblom needs a little bit, you know, a couple more opportunities to get out there and yep. play? I think he deserves it too. I just think yeah. uh, Morasic's been good. And Richardson says, hey, you know what? You're going to play good. You're going to keep playing. And, uh, you know, the last game against Vegas, he was good. And I thought he was good against Toronto too. I think Morasic. Yeah. No, you know what? It was Soderblom, I think. But Soderblom has played. I, I I don't think that Bru- he has. Bruins. Okay. The first game against honestly, the Bruins, dude, good. these two guys have probably probably been the most consistent on the team. To be honest with you, yep. The goaltending is not bad at all. The goaltending is not hurting us. Not like these other teams, like Edmonton. I mean, if, if, can you imagine yeah. if they had these guys? It would be twenty times worse, probably. <laughs> but, right. But it hasn't been our our flaw. Our our thing is we're young. We're building lack of depth right now and. We're still waiting for guys in college, juniors, and eventually they'll be ready. Right. Man, that's hard to believe, man. I say hard next to year Nolan Allen will be on the team. Hopefully we get a little sniff of Nazar coming up. That would yeah. be cool. And then maybe Oliver Moore. Maybe he'll be ready I to think go. He's got, I think he's got two years. Two years, maybe. Yeah, oh, man, he's got to grow into his man body a little bit. I, dude, we're gonna be good. I, know. I, I like Vlasic back there. I like the big bodies back there. Hawks have never yeah. had big dudes, you know, on the blue line. It's always been like small, like Brian Campbell guys. And Duncan yeah. Keith is a, you know, a freak, but he's not like a big body. Like I'm, I'm talking about like big Chara guys and yeah. long reach and stuff. It, 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 Hawks have never had that, so. Unfortunately, Velasic, you know, he took that hit in the game in the Vegas game. You know, let me look up his status right now because oh, it wasn't it. a dirty hit, and he was kind of just like hit. The, he was hit in the shoulder, but his head was kind of rocked a bit. So, um, let me see I'm here. gonna go Vlasic. back to Wyatt Kaiser, though, man. I think that he's been a surprise for me, for sure. I don't know how many points he has this year, but he was a late draft pick. So he got his he first was. point last game against uh, Vegas. He got his first assist, and I think that's his fourth career point. But uh, he's been solid, man. He's even, even rating, and uh, I think he's going to be a good defenseman in the future too. Yeah, really no update here on Alex Vlasic's uh, injury. So um, we'll post that on, on Twitter when we get the chance. Matt, you know, we were talking about Jack Hughes 
you know, Alex DeBrinkett is lighting it up over there in Detroit. Him and Dylan Larkin. I mean, yeah. I think this has been said. I've so I'm told with the Red Wings fans, they knew he was coming. <laughs> Just a matter of time. And man, it's been working out. DeBrinkett's leading the league in goals with nine right now. And uh, Dylan Larkin's got 15 points. Debrink at 13 points. Just, uh, we were just talking before we hit the record button. But I think if you bring in Patrick Kane, that might ruin it. I don't know about you, but for me, I think I wouldn't touch the chemistry these guys got right now. Mm, that's interesting. I don't look at Kaner as like a chemistry disruptor. I think more of like a catalyst. A <laughs> Yeah, a gainer, exactly. Even after what happened in New York last year, I mean, New York was already a mess. Yeah, it's not his know? fault. Yeah, it wasn't his fault. Yeah. Uh, if you would have went on to, if you would have went on to New Jersey, they probably would would have had a better chance. I've been hearing a lot of Dallas rumors still. Dallas is still yeah. really high on Kane, and they're trying to make something work. That's what I was told. Um, that's what I've read. I just don't, I don't see it. They're, to me, they're an old team. I know you got yeah, your young studs with Robertson, Rupe Hintz, uh, Jake Ottinger, one of the best goalies in the league. But, you know, you got your Sagans, you got your Pavelski. But I credit Pavelski, the dude's almost 40, still lighting it up. Dallas has only lost once, dude. They're, you know, four and one and one. Well, they lost twice, but once in regulation. They're a good team. They got... Uh, a plus two differential, so they do have 17 goals this season, 15 against. Um, just to me, though, they got to move from Sagan and Jamie Benn. They got to start yeah, thinking younger and building around on. these guys because they're not going to be around forever either. How many more years do they have left? Let me look at their contract. Was, was that quick. an identical contract? Did they do like... No, no wasn't. I don't okay, think so. I thought they did something similar to Kane and Taves. But Tyler yeah, the, those guys are getting up there. Definitely, Jamie Ben. I he's not the same player either, man. No, I think Sagan could he's, be good. He's but, like yeah. Park Goon now, you know. He is. He is. Uh, I've I've seen a lot of videos of him just kind of knocking sticks out of guys and just suckering them and stuff. I didn't know yeah. he was like that till like last season. Like, what's up with this dude? Yeah, it looks like Sagan's got after this season. He's got three more years, man. How old is he? Because he had, he had an eight year, seventy eight million dollar deal. He's yeah, so he'll be what thirty six when his when his contract is up. Wow. Now let me look up Jamie Ben. I think his is his is uh, shorter. I mean, not shorter. I think it. I think it's. So this year he's got four points in six games. Not oh yeah, bad. his he's got one more year at nine at a nine point five million cap hit. Wow. So last season he, believe it or not, he put in thirty three goals. That's not bad. Jamie Ben did that. Wait, that can't be right. <laughs> it can't be right, but I think it's right. Hold on. So the last two seasons he's played full. 82 games, eight and two in 2022, 18 goals, 28 assists, 46 points. 20 the 22 23 season, which was last year, 33 goals and 45 assists. Okay, and he's getting up there in age, dude. He's 34. So, yeah, and Sagan's 33. Um, last year he had he played seventy six games. He had twenty one goals and twenty nine assists. That's not that was last year. Last year. So okay, the uh, the hockey reference page is way off. Then no, no, no. I'm talking about uh, Tyler oh, Sagan. Tyler Sagan. Yeah, yeah. As a pairing. Wow, I thought um, Jamie Ben would be worse than Tyler. Sagan. I would think so wow, too. I'm He's dead wrong. <laughs> Sagan's average time on ice last season was 16 minutes and 37 seconds. Easy. He's got three points in six games so far this season. I so he's on Jamie Ben was 15 minutes. Okay. 15, so yeah, 15 minutes, 47 seconds. Sagan's on pace for 41 points this season. So yeah, Jamie Ben's got yeah two goals and two assists. 
Yeah. I still think it's the new wave is going to take over. Jason Robertson. Yeah. But good for Jamie Ben. I thought, if anything, his numbers were down last year, but they were actually up, which is crazy. D- Dallas is not, you know, they're just getting old to me. And you got the young goaltender, Jake Ottinger. I think he's probably one of the best. If any, it's him and Connor Hellebuck going to be stud goalies for a while. And I, I just don't see any other dominant goalies. V- Vasilevsky, and then you got. Um, Shesterkin, and they're saying Gorgiev now on the Avalanche is like better than Shesterkin, which I'm like, what? I'm like, what? that team is just a brick shit house. They're a powerhouse, you know? Yeah. And I think he's just benefiting. Like, look at Darcy Kemper. He won the cup with them. He wasn't that good of yeah. a goalie. It didn't really no, matter who was in not. that. So, I mean, we'll see, but I still think my, my top goalies will be Ottinger, Vasilevsky. The abs are tough, dude. What's that? The abs are tough, man. Oh man, they're so fast. You make a mistake. Even a, they had, they were shorthanded against the Hawks. They they scored a shorthanded goal, and <laughs> I mean they they just looked like they were on the power play. That's how fast and just in your face they were. And man, they play the game right, man. They play just like the 2010 Hawks. Just you have no time to even think. Like they were just moving the puck so fast. That's how the Devils were honestly playing, too, that second period against uh, the Capitals the other night. I just felt like Hughes had the puck, 1-2, was gone. The next guy, you know, moving it up, gone. I mean, they were just tape-to-tape fast passes. The Caps couldn't even, like, like, like who do we cover? <laughs> like, it was just so fast, so... Right. The, those are the and those are the teams that are winning. I mean, look at the look at the standings. The Avalanche are still freaking powerhouse. The Devils are kind of taking the the East by storm, and those those are the teams that are successful. Like the guys that hold the puck too long are, you know, like unfortunately, I like I said, Connor Bedard likes to hold that puck way too long, and it's not juniors anymore, dude. You got to move that puck, or you're gonna you're gonna cause a turnover, or you're gonna get just rolled over by a defenseman. So, well, cool, man. All right, everybody. That's all that we got for you this week. Catch us next week. We're going to keep on bringing you more action from the Blackhawks. Hopefully, they can win a couple more games. Tough schedule, but I'll tell you what, man. This team, they're fighting, and that's really all that we can ask for. I think that it's awesome. Uh, And I think that uh, the Blackhawks are getting so much good experience with these young kids that um, it's just going to pay. you know, just dividends later on down the road. So that's all that we got for you guys. And we'll see you on the next one. This is the Tomahawk and we're out of here.